Hey guys, we all love a good story, and today we're gonna get to hear the story of Spencer from SB Mowing. Odds are, you've probably seen SB Mowing's viral videos, they're all over the internet, of Spencer from SB Mowing doing lawn care makeovers, pressure washing transformations, they're oddly satisfying, and he does them for completely free to help out people in his community. It's a heartwarming story, and it goes beyond just YouTube. Spencer actually started a lawn care business at the age of 12, and today he's gonna share the story of how he went from a young teenager without a driver's license to being a YouTube star and running a lawn care business. So, without further ado, here's the story told in his own words of Spencer from SB Mowing. SB Mo, and welcome back to the show, man. What's up, man? It's it's been a while since we've seen each other, but we were on the phone not too long ago. <laughs> yeah, for three hours and thirty four minutes. Man. <laughs> that was a good conversation. <laughs> that was awesome. I was driving home from Alabama, guys, and I was so tired. Jason Creole worked me all day, didn't pay me anything. <laughs> I'm like, how am I going to stay awake driving all the way from Alabama to Georgia? It doesn't sound that long, but it's three hours. And uh, so I called the juggernaut. And, uh, and then he, he, somehow he got you on the phone and we, we talked for like three hours and 34 minutes, man. Yeah. We were already on the phone with each other and he's like, Hey, Paul's calling me. You want to do a conference call? I'm like, yeah, that'd be cool. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, man. That was really, really encouraging uh, conversation yeah, with you guys. Yeah. It's nice to just be able to talk to just people that are kind of doing the same thing as you and get encouragement from them and kind of be vulnerable with them and stuff. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So I know we interviewed you on the show before. Was that the episode with Beck the Beast and Lawn Care Juggernaut? I think that was. Yeah, it was just a short little snippet of that GIE after party. So we can get a little more of the um, behind the scenes of, of your story and how you got into lawn care. So why don't you you tell us how it, how it all got started? You out there cutting that grass, making that cash? <laughs> yeah, so... Um... I actually started, uh, it's been 11 years, uh, going on my 12th year, which sounds crazy. Some some people may not uh, count it, but I actually started in sixth grade with my buddy, Chris. We used my, my dad's lawnmower and his little, his little crappy weed eater he had. And we went and knocked on some doors and we got a few lawns and we were so excited, you know, that first night. I think I was 11 or 12 years old. You know, we were just standing up the night before planning what exactly, who's going to mow, who's going to weed eat. How we're gonna do everything we're so excited as little kids and uh that's how i kind of got into it and we uh we did it for a few years together and started building it up and then we kind of split off and he went on his own and i went on my own and then you know after a few years i was able to save up for a riding lawnmower and my dad would bring me around places i would ride my lawnmower down the street to places and then i went off to college i actually went about two and a half hours away i'm like all right i'd love to keep doing it you know but i need to hire some people to help me out. So that's kind of how I got. Where did you go to college at? Uh, Kansas State University. That's the Wildcats. purple. 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 Wildcats, baby. <laughs> you must have been in diapers, man. But back when I was a kid, they were really good at football. Kansas State. I think yeah. the coach's name was Snyder. They, they were real good. Yeah, really Bill nice. Snyder. And he was still coaching uh, the last three years that I was in school and the last year he retired. So it was cool. So I got to see a bunch of him coaching games. That's great. So you're at Kansas State, which is multiple hours away from your hometown, but you still had clients that you were responsible for. How in the world did you manage that? So it was uh, it was two and a half hours away. I was driving back every Friday night, staying until about Sunday. I'd go out with, I hired my brother on, and then later on I hired one other guy. And so they'd be out on Fridays and then I'd come out Saturday and go out with my brother and just get as many done as we could because we don't like to work on Sundays. But if, if we had to, we we just got the last couple done on Sundays. So basically my college career was going to school and I was also an RA there. Um, so going to school and being an RA and working there throughout the week. And then every weekend I'd drive back every Friday and mow all weekend and trying to keep a relationship as well and trying to have fun, trying to, you know, party, have fun with friends, have the college experience. Is this the uh, same is, relationship of the young lady you're marrying? It is. We're getting married soon. I slipped a date and, uh, in one of my videos, she's like, yeah, you probably shouldn't say that because people can probably look you up when, uh, and find out when and where our wedding is. And that'd be kind of weird people showing up in the next few months we are getting married. And it is the same lady we've been dating almost six years. So. That's fantastic. How has uh, YouTube, social media played into your lawn care business? Because 
I know a lot of guys' stories are they were watching Geek the Freak or somebody, you know, back mm-hmm. in the day. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> did any of that, you were already going since sixth grade, but did any of that kind of influence you that, man, there's other people doing what I'm doing across the nation? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, um, you know, I watched a lot of Top Notch uh, back in the day. A lot of Brian's Lawn Maintenance right when I was really scaling my business. It's just nice to get tips and tricks from people that have been in it for a while, especially when you're scaling from that kind of like, side hustle thing to more of I'm going to take this seriously, hire some people, grow my business, make it a serious thing, taking some serious cash, you know? What's the story behind the name SB Mowing? So (laughs) I was going to go with uh, Spencer Lawn Care, but that's uh, that's already taken as pretty popular. So (laughs) I'd say so. SB is just my initials, Spencer Bosley. So that's where I got it. It's super simple. I think a lot of people do that with their lawn business. So and then what does your business look like today? How many accounts do you have? Do you have any employees? What, what's the day in and day out operation? Yeah, so basically, I'm almost completely out of the field. Um, the only time I'm in is when a couple of my employees or an employee needs to take off a day or so. But we don't do a lot. We do mostly uh, residential. I think we got about 50 residential that we do every week. And then uh, we got one or two commercial ones that we're doing. But I've got three part-time guys that are helping me out. We're out three days a week. I got my brother still helping me out. And then one other college student and one other high school student. So it's a great summer job from them. They can make some really good money doing it. And they're helping me out because they can be out mowing during the week. And then I can be working on some of my media side of my business. At what point did you get started with, you know, sharing kind of your story on online and things of that nature? And how, how did that go? Cause you were like, uh, rapidly growing like a a weed in spring man yeah so it was kind of wild so when i was in school i tried to get out and start recording maybe three years ago two or three years ago and i did some recording of me you know putting my equipment defender rack on my trailer uh stuff like that and i really never even got i just didn't like the way i was doing it i wasn't satisfied with the quality of it i'm really uh, picky with that stuff because i was just using my old motorola phone and stuff like that and i was using my little dinky laptop to try to edit it was really hard um i didn't really have a lot of time since i was in school and stuff so once i graduated i'm like oh i kind of want to start uh doing this getting some content out there i've always wanted to do it i've always been kind of I've told people this, I've always been super addicted to YouTube. <laughs> I love watching YouTube all the time. You know, I used to watch it hours before bed. What, so what, do you, I, what, what do you watch on YouTube? Who are some of your favorite creators and why? Oh, man, there's a ton. Um, I like Project Farm, if you've ever heard of him. He's a big uh, tool review guy, and he's actually based in Kansas where I'm at. So, Okay. I met the Stony Ridge Farmer guy, but uh, I don't okay. know Project Farm. That's in Kansas, eh? Yeah, he's in Kansas. He's got, I think, he's coming up on 3 million subscribers. He's got probably the biggest tool review channel. He buys all of his stuff with his own money and does a third-party tool reviews and stuff. If any of you ever played RuneScape back in the day, I still watch some RuneScape YouTubers. I don't play RuneScape, but uh, I still keep my eye on some of the lawn care stuff. I don't quite watch lawn care as much anymore, but yeah, just whatever comes up on my suggested, really. So this farmer guy, what have you learned from him that's like encouraged you, your creative juices as a creator? I can tell that he puts, that his videos are really successful because he puts a lot of effort and a lot of time into them. Like I saw this one where he was doing, doing a review on windshield wipers and like comparing and contrasting like 10 different brands or something. And he literally left two of each brand on top of his roof that he like nailed to his roof or something for an entire year to see like the uv like how the uv exposure affected how the windshield wiper did a year later so he puts a lot of time and effort tries to make high quality content and that's you know what i've been really into just making high quality content making it really enjoyable for the viewer making it fast paced where the viewer doesn't get bored he he definitely does that just keeps keeps the action rolling so i i think that's been really influential on what i've done well, yeah, your videos are absolutely high quality, and I can't imagine how many hours. I- I'm a amateur uh, creator, you know <laughs> what I mean? And I-, I look at, you know, what you're producing, and I'm just like, it looks like somebody from Hollywood's there, you know? Oh, like, thank you. <laughs> it's really, really good what you're doing. So I, I definitely take notice and, and-, and respect the-, the amount of time you have to be putting into to creating a-, a simple video. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that because I've, I've really – kind of stepped it up when 
because I, I mean, I just started last August and I've been learning a lot, uh, like through my editing and stuff and just through being out in the field recording. And so you can kind of see the progression. If you go like way back, you can kind of see the progression of the quality. Um, I think at least just it, it's kind of become more production now. And I spend a lot more time on my computer, making sure the edits are really smooth, making sure every single transition is perfect into the next one. Um, and just making sure everything is just super high quality. Cause you know, if people don't like watching it, they're not going to watch it. So I want to make something that the viewer is going to really enjoy and that they're going to come back for more. That's fantastic. So what are your goals for the future? I'm just trying to get through life right now. <laughs> I've been so busy. Uh, get married. Getting prepared. Yeah. Getting prepared for the wedding, you know, trying to balance doing YouTube and social media. And then also with my balancing the time with my normal business. And then also I'm doing contract work on the side for uh, the company I used to work for um, that I graduated. And then, so yeah, I graduated in 2021 and went on full-time with them for six or seven months. And then it ended up going full-time YouTube after that. So I'm just doing some contract work on the side for them as well. What's some advice that you would have for somebody who's thinking about getting into lawn care? You know, you started in the sixth grade, you oh, come yeah. up through the ranks. Uh, there's guys that are listening to the green industry podcast and I feel a responsibility because they're like, man, I'm in year one or I'm in year two, or I'm about to leave my job. There's a incredible influx of people coming into this industry. I'm trying my best with this show to put out <laughs> information, but what, what would you say Spencer is some tips that you would share for the guys that are in year one, two or three. This wouldn't be perfect for everybody, but this is kind of the tips that I would give somebody that's new that I've seen that's worked for me and it's been helped me be successful. Number one is you don't need to go out and spend twenty or thirty thousand dollars on equipment. You know, use what you have, upgrade when you can, invest your money back in when you can. Don't take out too much debt. Uh, do it in a smart way. That's definitely what I've done. I've kind of started small. You know, push mower, weed eater, save up enough money to get you know a residential lawnmower. You don't need to go get a twelve thousand dollar lawnmower to start out with. You know, start out with a $3,000 lawnmower, go get a Hustler Raptor or, or a Toro Time Cutter, get something that you can start out with and use to really increase your production. You know, it's not going to last you a really long time, but it'll get through, through a year or two of lawns and you'll learn a lot about how to take care of a lawnmower that way too. Also, another big tip that I have that has really accelerated my business is kind of a marketing strategy. And that's going on Facebook and joining all of your buy, sell, trade groups around your area. So I'm in Wichita, Kansas and, you know, around Mays, Kansas as well and Goddard. And so I just went and joined like 20 or 30, you know, Wichita, Kansas, buy, sell, trade, 316, buy, sell, trade, Wichita virtual yard sale and just joined as many as I can. And some of them have strict rules where you can't, you know, post business advertisements in it, but a lot of them are pretty chill and it's a great free way to advertise. I usually just, you know, go take a picture of me out mowing the lawn. Um, have someone take a picture of me and put it on there and say, hey, I'm taking on clients. Um, if you're interested, shoot me a message. Here's my phone number. Uh, give me a call. And honestly, that's been 80 to 90% of my clients that I've gained throughout the years. And they've all been really good clients too. You mentioned mowers and, and you can start off with residential if you don't have a pile of, of uh, money that's growing on the trees in your backyard. Yeah. Uh, what about power equipment? What what do you use? Why do you use it? What's your recommendation? Because because you really need a weed eater and a blower, and and then if you have more money, you you know you like get a stick edge or a hedge trimmer. What what's your best advice for power equipment for the guys just getting into the industry? Yeah, if you're just getting into it, definitely get either an echo or a steel attachment system to where you can just uh, have your one motor head, and then you've got your uh, your trimmer head and your edger head on it, um, and then you, you know, if you need hedge trimmers, you can just buy an attachment for it instead of buying the entire unit. It seems to be a lot, just a lot smarter that way and a lot, you know, less money invested into multiple motors and stuff. I think that's the best way to go for someone just starting out is to go get an Echo PAS or a, a steel combi system. What well, you're, you're sound like a politician here, Echo or steel. Are, we, are you uh an Echo guy, a steel guy or, or what? I am an Echo guy. I love their blowers, love their weeders. But honestly, I've never really used steel, so I can't really say the one's better than the other. I didn't know if they were sponsoning you or something because you're, you're sitting there like, what, Echo or steel? But 
No, I'm not sponsored by either Echo or Shield, but I, I do like Echo products. And Echo, if you're hearing this, you know, you can contact me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'd love to show off your product. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. I just got the uh, PB9010, man. Oh, yeah. Woo-wee. It, it's I, obviously... Go ahead. I just bought my second one, and they're all on back order right now in my area. So I called every dealership within an hour and a half drive of Wichita. And I found one like an hour and 10 minutes away and I went and snagged it because everyone was on back order until like the middle of June. Yeah. So, you know, those are good because people are, people are buying them up. Yeah. They're incredible. It's not, it's obviously not leaf season right now. We're front end of summer. It's start about to start here in Georgia. I got sunburn. It feels like, the middle of summer. <laughs> I mean, I can't even imagine what this thing's going to do with leaves, but just, you know, blowing a little bit the of debris off the sidewalk is like oh, way yeah. too much. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely love it. You mentioned equipment defender top of the broadcast. What's kind of your setup and, and how do you store your equipment on the truck? And when you're not on the truck, what, what's kind of your tips for moving around town efficiently and, and storing stuff so it doesn't get stolen? Yes. Yeah, so I've always used equipment defender. That's the first things I put on my rack. I bought them, I don't know, six years ago, something like that. And I've never had a problem with a trimmer getting stolen or had a problem with a blower getting stolen. The only things I've gotten stolen were a gas can that I did not have chained up. And then I bought a brand new weed eater. It was some Echo. It was better than the... No, it was like in between that and the 225. It's just someone I picked up at Home Depot real quick. And I was super excited because I've never used a more powerful than, a more powerful weed eater than my 225. And I'm like, oh, I'm super excited for this. I'm going to put it in the back of my truck because I've got to go mow one lawn. Um, and I'll get done with that lawn and I'll put all the, the little uh, hardware things for equipment defender on it. And so I can put it in my rack. And yeah, during that lawn, someone rolled up, went and stole my gas can site and saw that there was a weed in the back and said, oh, this is super cool and grabbed it and took it and put it in their car. I've got a video of it too on the wow. neighbor's rain doorbell camera. And <laughs> they, the Kansas police folk didn't do nothing about it or what? They made a case. They didn't know they didn't do anything. I had a PB8010. I was out on a tour, and I'm not going to throw shade, but I told somebody, <laughs> whatever you do when you go in the backyard, you, you know, Atlanta, man, they'll snatch that. It's like they're yeah. hiding in the trees waiting. It's crazy, man. You know, lo and behold, I come back, and it's like, hey, where's the 8010? Paul, Paul. <laughs> you stole it. I was like, <laughs> So anyway, I, I still don't know if it was an inside job and they just stole it and told me someone else stole it or if yeah. someone actually stole it. But my friend, he actually had steel. He had, uh, I think it was called, a, it's neither here nor there, BR600, I think it was. Oh, yeah. He was at Publix, which is our grocery store down here. And uh, he put it in, in the bed of his truck, but he kind of had it hidden a little bit. And he just went in to get one thing, just as a little bit of ground, ground beef. And uh, he comes out and he can see the guy taking it. And uh, the guy put it in his car and drove off. They kind of got in a little oh, chase man. and the guy got, got away. So then this was in uh, June. So then father's day was like right then. So his wife and his kids, I, I don't know steel. So guys don't get mad at me, but I think it's <laughs> ER 800 maybe. I think that's their biggest one. Yeah. So anyway, they got him that for father's day, which was like, you know, just a few days after his blower got stolen. He's a full time this guy does mm -hmm. uh, real mowing. He real mows the barbecue. Oh, wow. so he, he has to, does incredible work. So they get him the BR 800 and uh, he's in the front yard and he has his trailer down, the tailgates down and he's over by the garden beds. I think he's hedge trimming and somebody pulls up. Well, he's in the front yard and he's packing <laughs> heat too. Somebody pulls up, takes it out of the trunk right in, right in front of him. Oh man. And they knew because his tailgates down, he's going to have to put it up. You know, it's, mm. and so they just sped off. And then again, he, by the time he got it up he, to chase them, they were gone. They wow. Started, right. I mean, you know, right in front of him, right in front of him. And, he, you know, the instinct was he didn't pull the gun and shoot him, which is probably smart over a six hundred dollar blower. But yeah. <laughs> it's like even that. I mean, it's just wild out there. So I. Oh man, I, I watch the Andy Griffith show on TV in this town called Mayberry and everything's like perfect and. Barney Fife has nothing to do all day because there's no crime. But the reality of our day is, man, it's crazy out there. He's pretty lucky he didn't shoot him. I'm a pretty big gun guy. And uh, at least here in Kansas, uh, you can't shoot someone unless you're being threatened, like physically. Like if your life is being threatened, 
Yeah, like if someone's just stealing something, you cannot shoot someone, at least here in Kansas. Well, he didn't, you know, and I didn't shoot him, but like, shoot, <laughs> yeah. you know, just shoot the air or something. Like, <laughs> give me my door. Boom, boom. <laughs> oh, boy. But I, yeah, people think I'm I'm crazy now because even my racks on my, uh, so I just got done building like a whole new setup for my truck because I've got a, uh, a ramp rack now, which is super awesome. They're a little bit expensive, but they're really, really handy. You don't have to buy a trailer or anything, but I just got done building like sidewalls on my truck, like like three walls, two on the side and, and one right behind the cab uh, with steel. And my brother helped me weld it up and everything. He spent the last two weeks on that. It's basically my new setup that I'm using to travel and stuff. People think I'm crazy because when they see my new setup, <laughs> I've got the <laughs> the equipment defender racks on it. And then I've got chains locked around the equipment defender racks, racks through the steel and I have padlocks on those. And then I have padlocks on, I think I went to Menards and bought like $100 in padlocks. And so I've got padlocks on all my gas cans, all my racks, all my just, I've got one set aside for me to chain my mower to if I need to, one set aside to chain my pressure washer if I need to. And just everything's chained up. Uh, the only thing I don't really chain up is shovels and stuff because you can't really chain them up if they don't have a if they've just got a straight handle. I've been, ever since I've got something stolen, I took it really personally and um, I'm kind of like crazy about it now. <laughs> That's really good. Tell me a little bit more about the ramp rack. How much is, uh, did you pay for it? And, and what are your thoughts? I did not pay for it. Uh, they actually sent it to me uh, a couple months ago. That's but awesome, man, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It is awesome. So they sent me the ramp rack sport model. I think it goes for like 22 or 2300 bucks, which is pretty pricey. Like you can get a pretty good trailer for that for that price so i wish it was a little bit cheaper but it is really nice not having to pull a trailer first off it's really nice just just being able to put everything in the back in the back of your truck and just going you don't have an extra place to store stuff you don't have to worry about training employees to how to drive or back a trailer and again you don't have to worry about getting stuck in like in a situation where you it's really hard to back a trailer up or i'm sure everyone's been in that situation where you you pull in somewhere you're like oh no this is gonna be tough getting out of and then you can also park anywhere with it, which is really nice. You don't have to find, you know, a pull through parking spot or park on the side somewhere. You just park in a normal spot. Um, it just makes driving easier. It makes storing stuff easier. It makes everything a little bit more efficient. You know, you don't have to find a, a super big spot to park next to your client's drive. You can just kind of pull up right next to it, even if it's just a small little median or something. But it is really efficient, but it is pricey. I wish it was a little bit less pricey for sure. That's super cool, man. Well, what what excites you about the future other than the marriage? Well, that's obvious. What else is exciting you about, you know, looking to the rest of 2022? Man, I'm excited. And I I know you're definitely excited about this, but GIE or Equip Expo now. I'm super excited about it. Last year was my first year. Definitely made so many friends, got to meet so many people, create a lot of relationships and just being able to hang out with people. So I'm really excited for that. And shout out to Paul. He's got a code for it. So uh, Promo code it, Paul. That's right. Get that half off right now. <laughs> yeah, you can get 50% off. You can double dip. You can get early bird registration and then you can get 50% off of that. And uh, what is, is that? Like, like 10, bucks 10 bucks a ticket? Yeah, it's 10 bucks a ticket right That's now. That's crazy. Get that. Even yeah. if you don't know if you're going to go, like if you think you might go, buy it anyway. Cause it, it's like what, 50 bucks at the door. Maybe yeah, even Dumbbell more. Jr., my first year, I pay full, full price. And you can't even register online if you wait till the last week. They shut it down. So oh, yeah. I go in there my first year, 2017, and there's a crazy line. And I have to wait <laughs> in the line. Then I have to pay full price. And so. I, uh, I definitely learned my lesson. Get it early. Even if you think you may not go, just get it. And use Paul. Now, last year, didn't you uh, carpool with uh, Kevin Hansen, the juggernaut, long hair juggernaut? Yeah, so it was me, Adam Devine, who's out of El Dorado, Kansas, with Devine Lawns, and then Chris with shout, Blind shout TV. Shout-outs to Adam. He told me he listens to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Adam, he listens to a lot of long hair podcasts. He's always telling me, at least when we get to talking, oh, yeah, I was listening to Paul or... Listen to Brian. He keeps up with it when he's out in the field mowing, for sure. I went up with Adam Devine, Kevin, and then Chris from Blind TV. Blind guy, runs his own lawn company. His vision is like looking through a really, really, really long toilet paper tube. And it's very, very blurry at the end. <laughs> so he can barely see anything. He is like almost completely blind. And he runs a lawn company. He goes out and hustles. You know, that guy's an inspiration. You should get him on this podcast if you haven't yet. Okay. What? Tell me a story again. I think I. I think I met. Must have met him. He, yeah. He. Uh, I think I yeah, met he, him actually. 
He works full time at maintenance mowing for I think Oklahoma Christian University or Swasu. Yeah, Southwestern Oklahoma University. So he works full time as a maintenance guy there, taking care of their lawn and stuff. And then on the side and weekends, he's got his own lawnmower and like a trailer that hooks up to his lawnmower because um, he can't get a driver's license to actually drive. Um, he can't drive because he's blind, <laughs> but he can use his lawnmower to get around. So he drives his lawnmower like down the streets and stuff. He is a hustler. He, he gets it done. That's a guy you need on the podcast. <laughs> That's a cool story. Well, Equip's going to be crazy this year because last year you were just at the infancy of sharing your story on the internet. I was a month in. <laughs> I, I remember I interviewed you and Beck the Beast and the Juggernaut. Mm -hmm. And so this year it's going to be different because you're going to have people recognize you like, oh, I watch your videos and everything. F funny, funny story, man. In 2019, Spencer, I think it was 2018 or 2019. I don't remember. But uh, the Lung Care Juggernaut hadn't started sharing his videos on, on YouTube. Well, he maybe he did, but just, he wasn't getting any traction. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came up to me, had a hat. And he said, Paul, he's like, he's, he's real, real shy. He's like, hey, man, can you sign my hat? And I was oh, like, <laughs> I said, no, nah, no problem, man. I don't, no one ever asked me for autograph my life. So I'm, my head's big as a Scott, you know. I was like, all right, Kevin. So I signed his hat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the same way I was with Kevin, actually. So you're just watching these guys on social media that are getting hundreds of thousands and millions of views. A ton of people know them. You know, they kind of don't seem real to you. And then, like, once you see him in, in person, it's like, oh, man, that's weird. Like, he's actually real. I'm seeing him. I kind of had that moment with, with Kevin. He, uh, my first month on YouTube, actually, my second video just absolutely went nuts. Like, I think the first month it got a few million views, like five or six million views or something like that. It just went absolutely nuts. And I was just out doing some solo work, just mowing lawns. And I just get done with this yard. And get back in my truck and I've got this voicemail. I'm like, what the heck? Probably some guy wanting a quote or something. So I call him back or sorry, I listen to the voicemail. He goes, Hey man, this is Kevin the Long Care Jar. And I'm like, What? How the heck did he get my number? He must have looked it up online. And first of all, like he's calling me, like, what the heck? He's like, Hey man, just I've seen you uh doing really well on YouTube. Like, that's awesome, dude. Uh just give me a call back whenever you can. I'd love to talk to you. And so that's kind of how we met. And that's where he invited me to GIE. And my girlfriend, the time fiance now was like, man, are you sure you want to go to Louisville with them? Are you sure not going to, like, he's not going to kidnap you or something. I'm like, no, I think it'll be okay. But <laughs> she was pretty sketched out at first for me. Yeah. That's how I was with Naylor. <laughs> Naylor, the lawn care rookie. Uh -huh. LCR media. I was on Snapchat back in like 2015 or whatever. And I, I watched his YouTube videos. Like he was mm -hmm. one of the main guys that I watched because we were in a similar, he was solo. I was solo. I could really resonate with his, where, where he was at with his business being one crew and trying to get guys and all this stuff. So I would watch his videos. Like I knew his yards. I knew his, I knew all about his life. Cause I watched him all the time. Yeah. I to watch like his whole video. I, I loved the, you know, one care rookie. So somehow I found him on Snapchat. Somehow he invited me to message on Snapchat with some other guys or whatever. And I remember like seeing his name is like lawn care rookie. It was BNB lawn care too. BNB lawn yeah. care. And then I'd open the snap and it's like, you know, they're talking. I'm like, hey, no, he's talking to me. Like he knew my name. He's like, Hey Paul, nice to meet you. I was like, Paul, you know, he knows my name's Paul. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was starstruck, man. And then Naylor, I was like, I had so much respect for him. And so now it's like, I got to go to his house a couple of times, oh, that's and, cool. you know, we're friends or whatever, but it's still, it's like, there's this reverence or respect or, or, or whatever. I guess you just see him on the screen. It was funny. My little niece, they Bluetooth YouTube onto the big screen. I was recently at my sister's house. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my little niece was watching me on YouTube. <laughs> and, oh, man. And then she's only two years old. And then when I wasn't on TV anymore, she doesn't know. She's looking at me and she's like, her eyes are all big. And she's like, you know, Uncle Paul. <laughs> she's like, because she, when she's watching TV, she, yeah. she doesn't know. And then she saw me up there and she's like, Uncle Paul. He's a celebrity. <laughs> Are you still like that with anyone in, in the lawn care industry? Like, oh man, like this person's so cool. They, I feel like it's like they're a celebrity. Like, like, it, like anyone you don't know very well that's that you're like that with, or are you pretty pretty well versed where you're pretty much friends with everyone now? I, I don't know, dude. It's it's weird. Like Brian, <laughs> Brian Fullerton's my buddy or whatever, but I just I just respect these guys. I think I think that's yeah. what it is. I just respect them, and it's really cool to get to meet these guys 
off air. Like, you know, I got to talk yeah. with you and, and, and juggernaut for three hours and 34 minutes. And it's like, uh, we say all the time, like iron sharpens iron, like, Oh yeah. Off camera. You guys are real people that are, are really trying to do good on this world in this world. And so it's, it's encouraging me, encouraging to me. And it's the same, like when I'm with Naylor, same thing. And, 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 um, Caleb and Brittany Allman, absolutely Fullerton. It's like, guys, it's so refreshing to meet someone off air and be like, edified by them and encouraged by them and and the greatest of all of them is geek to free greg chisholm oh yeah i know great or uh juggernaut i saw him in his driveway so i, I realized he got to go to greg's house i think he said he got <laughs> spend the night and go to texas roadhouse or whatever oh greg, yeah greg made me a frozen pizza with one dollar <laughs> that was a little crazy because naylor called me one day and he's like hey are you sitting down and i was like no i'm standing up he's like go sit down i was like yes sir <laughs> He's like, where are you sitting down? I was like, I'm sitting down. I was sitting at my kitchen table. He's like, you sitting down? I was like, I'm sitting down. They like, tell me, what do you want? Tell me. He's because we were going on tour to do podcast interviews. He's like, guess where we're going on tour? I was like, where? He's like, geek the freaks. He's like, you can't tell anybody. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I won't tell anyone. And I was like, how in the world did you even get his number? Because no one had heard from him for years or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's like, just don't ask questions. We're going to go to his house or whatever. So. <laughs> We type in his address to the GPS. I picked Naylor up at the St. Louis airport, type in the address, and we're driving there, and we get in this really, really nice neighborhood. And and uh, Naylor and I were talking the whole way from the airport to Greg's house oh, until we got to the neighborhood. And then we're like, the GPS thing shows you you're one mile away. So we get one mile away, and Naylor just stops talking. Just mid-sentence, he just stops talking. And I stop talking. It's dead silent in the car because we're both nervous. <laughs> and, then, and then the GPS lady's like, turn left. And we turn left and we're in his driveway. It's like you could have heard a pin drop. We're both nervous as could be. And and we pull into his nice driveway and then the, the garage door slowly opens. And, and I know Greg's legs, not to sound weird. <laughs> I just recognize his legs. He's kind of a tall, lanky guy. And he has this Geek the Freak Fitness shirt on. I don't know if you, if you ever watched him on YouTube. Yep. He used to work out. And he had this blue Geek the Freak shirt on. And he's like, hey, guys. And, and me and Naylor are still like starstruck. And I had to go to the bathroom so bad. So I, I was like, can I use your bathroom, man? And he's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Come on in. So, oh, man, I probably look like a fool. That is cool. He had, we were giving us the house tours. Like, here's my office. And it's real fancy office or whatever. And, and he's like, I got to show you my Hot Wheel cars. So we're like, Hot Wheel cars? I'm like, what in the world? I, hot, I don't know. I'm not into Hot Wheel cars, but I was like, oh. yeah. So come on, come on, come on. He's, so he takes us back to his be master bedroom and he has this closet that's like, it's like a room, but it's a closet. It's huge. So check these out, guys. And as he's showing us the Hot Wheel cars, I, not to be snooping around, but he has all these gold play buttons. <laughs> and they're just sitting in the closet and he had silver play buttons. And I was like, is that a YouTube gold play button? He's like, oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's like, hey, check out this Hot Wheel. Like, I, he's trying, I'm like, dude, I don't care about your Hot Wheel. Can I touch it? And he's like, <laughs> you want to, man? And, and he had, I don't know how many gold play buttons he had, but multiple. Hey. And then he had multiple silver play buttons because he had a bunch of channels. Oh, my gosh. I thought that was so cool. I've never met someone with a gold play button. And, and by the way, I should have said it's top of the broadcast. Congratulations on the silver play. <laughs> Thank you. It's on the <laughs> way. <laughs> Did they email you it's on the way or what? Yeah, they'll they'll they like review your channel and like confirm that all your subs are real and that you're legit. They give you a code and you go to a, a link that they send you and you put the code in and you get to type in whatever name you actually want on the plaque. You can put anything you want actually, um, and then they say, yeah, they send it to you. So I'll I'll have it here in I think two weeks. Wow, congratulations, man! What Thank what you. did you put? SB mowing or did you put something up? I put SB mowing. <laughs> that is so cool now are you gonna are you gonna get it like hung up in your house or what what's your plans for it i am hanging it up right next to my desk so yeah in my office i'm really excited for it i know a couple other guys have gotten some they're like oh it's no big deal and they just kind of keep them in their closet for a while i'm like dude i'm so proud of that like that is like eight months ago i i could have like dreamed that like i would have gotten a silver play button and now it's like reality so it's it's just kind of unreal What's it's your crazy. what's your advice to me? I got I got five thousand subscribers. I got my silver play. I'm looking at it right now. It's on my vision board, and, and it's a goal of mine. I, I want one one day. I, I'm not gonna put it in my closet like Greg and some of these guys. Like, <laughs> I'm like you, I'm gonna put that thing. You're gonna see that right on my uh, right on my fire. You're gonna see it right in the backdrop. I'm gonna yeah. look at it every day. 
<laughs> I want to have that thing uh, front and center, man. Well, what's your tip to a to a, a guy like me that's in a rut? Like it's just like, man, I'm I'm trying my best, and it just seems like it ain't going. The- Consistency, staying very consistent, watching your videos back, and seeing if you get bored with them, seeing if you like your videos, if you like watching them all the way through. Because if you don't like them, then other people are gonna like them. I do that with every single single one of my videos. I'm, I try to be super consistent with my content on how often I'm, I'm uploading. I try to just make everything as high quality as possible. Um, I put as much time into it as I can. And then I go back and I watch it over and over and over. And I'm making, I'm making changes every time I'm watching it. And yeah, even like my hour long videos, you know, I'm, I'm scrubbing through it over and over, just watching every single transition, you know, be consistent, make good content. As long as you just keep that up, it's going to come. Like the YouTube algorithm is going to pick you up. It, it's going to be fine. Just, Stay consistent, make good content, just keep going through the rut. YouTube's going to eventually pick you up. Who knows when? It could be tomorrow. It could be in a month or two, but <laughs> just keep it up. That's that's all I got to say. It's consistency. What uh, I really appreciate the encouragement. Let me ask the question you asked to me. When you go to Equip this year, is there somebody that you might run into at the hallway or, or at the podcast summit or at the, used to say in the GIE rally, that was Naylor's event <laughs> last year, but I guess this year it's the Equip rally. So when you're at these events and, and everyone's rubbing shoulders, is there somebody that you're going to be like, oh, man, they're so-and-so? Yeah, there is one person I'd say still, um, which I met him last year, very briefly, very briefly. Um, I've never actually gotten to talk to him. I would love to. You're good friends with him, Brian, Brian Fullerton. Um, I watch a lot of his videos. I look up to him a lot. I'd love to talk to him more, you know, get to know him a little bit better. Um, I just think he's still a celebrity in my eyes. <laughs> man, we got, got a, a house together in Florida to make content. Oh yeah. And, uh, I got sick and I, I mean, I was real sick. And so, uh, I'm laying in bed one morning and, and him and Brittany Allman come in and he's like, Hey, uh, we're going to give you a COVID test. And I, I got the fever. I got, the, I'm not, I'm not feeling well. I got all the symptoms. I'm just laying in bed. Like, ah, I'm all right. I'm just oh, going to sleep it off. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta give you this test. And he's holding this thing. And, uh, I'm like half asleep and he's like, ah, uh, I got to put it up your rear end. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I said, oh, man. Did you hey, smile? Brittany, <laughs> no, man. I was like, oh, tell Brittany to go uh, in the hallway or something because she was standing right there. And he started laughing so hard. He was pranking me. He's like, I'm just kidding, man. You put it in your nose. But <laughs> I thought he was going to oh, oh, man. <laughs> you got me good. You got excited, didn't you? <laughs> Not one bit, man. Not one bit. So you guys went to a, a house in Florida and made a bunch of content together? Yeah. So the TikTokers have a place called the Hype House. So a couple of years ago, I was telling Naylor, I said, did you see these TikTok kids in a house together and they're making content and the synergy of them being on each other's videos, the collaboration, they've all just exploded. I said, that's a mm-hmm. great idea. I said, why don't we do that? And Naylor's very, he's in retail management. He, he's very diplomatic and, and he thinks things through. Yeah. He says, Paul. We have wives and children. We, we can't just go all live in a house in Los <laughs> Angeles. And I'm single, so I don't think like that. I'm thinking, well, I'll go do it tomorrow. You know yeah. what I mean? I'll, <laughs> I'm pretty spontaneous or, or open to doing you know, anything. Oh, yeah. So he's like, I, he's like, I don't think we could pull that off. But he's like, what I think we could do is maybe do it for like a week. And I was like, all right, now we're talking. So I, I literally told Fullerton and, and Caleb, I said, hey, why don't we all get in the house together for a week and just make videos, make podcasts make content and so in 2021 we went to anna marie island florida and oh, uh, we, we, we stayed at, we would call it the hype house the green industry hype house and a bunch of creators came down i got a bunch of podcasts it was a great time and then we that ran sounds it. awesome yeah we ran it back this year so hopefully we'll do it again this year and and, and if so you know i'll definitely throw your name in the hat to come on down uh, yeah. i know got a silver play man uh, they invited me <laughs> and i got uh I got 5,000 subscribers, so I, I'm sure you can definitely get on the guest list. Man, that's super cool. Did you uh, did you feel like you really built off of, built off of each other's energy doing that and kind of? 100%. So it, it, the content, well, first of all, is always better in person because the nonverbal communications and the audio sounds so was a podcaster. I just sit in the family room or, or at the pool mm-hmm. and I just record episode after episode after episode after episode. So that's great. And then also we get to talk amongst each other about all kinds of things that it's kind of like in, in lawn care, 
your your local competitions mean mugging you and no one's talking and like <laughs> in the social media world you can kind of feel like well i wonder what this person's charging or what this person's doing with yeah. this brand and there's there's so much unknown and i say this all the time these big 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 brands if they're going to post something on instagram they have to hire and they go way overboard they hire like the cinematographer a plus mm. cinematographer and they'll have if you ever watch a video from one of these other com- you know big companies these videos are like super high produced and- oh yeah they well, spend a lot of money on this <laughs> a lot of money a lot of money and then they have to spend a lot of money to instagram or facebook or youtube or tiktok who wherever they post it cuz then they boost it they do like a sp- oh yeah boost. so they're spending tens of thousands of dollars for this one post you know what i mean yeah they're spending way more than that like w- when they go boost though they're spending like to pay Facebook or Google, like the amount of views that they're getting on those compared to like something that they could get on, you know, Brian's channel or my channel, like they're spending way more. But, <laughs> so anyway, it's a chance for us to talk and be like, we're worth a lot more than we're getting paid, you know, yeah. paid. And how do we compete with Instagram, Facebook, YouTube? Cause, cause they're getting, they're the ones getting paid. The big brands paying Instagram, YouTube, yep. whatever to pay. So anyway, these are the kind of conversations we're having in the hot tub club. And all the hot tub club. <laughs> there is a hot tub club. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. You, you're Brian Fullerton, your role model. You, you got it. You join the hot tub club, man. We'll, we'll see. There is a hot tub club, but uh, it, it's great. To, it's great to have these conversations and iron sharpens iron, and it, it makes us all better as entrepreneurs, as creators. It, it's fantastic. So I'm hoping that we do it again this this year. It'll be a third year, so we'll we'll see. That yeah, great. that's a. I've definitely had that experience with you know Kevin, Top Notch, a lot of the tall grass guys. We all kind of keep in touch pretty well, and you know we have those conversations a lot, and it's it's just nice to be able to find someone that is in the same situation as you. Cause there's not really a lot of creators that are huge in the lawn care industry. Like, like there's a decent amount, but it's not like you're not going to find someone in your hometown that's doing the same thing you are, or even maybe even someone in your state that's doing the same thing. So it's nice to have that kind of tight knit community to where you can all talk and bounce ideas off of each other and sharpen your iron and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. And I have a neighbor, he has 4 million Instagram followers and he Man. has 20,000, pardon me, 20,000, 20 million TikTok followers. Oh my goodness. And he has 4 million Instagram followers. And so, uh, and, and we live in the same apartment complex and then we live in, or we go to the same gym. And so he'll be on the, tra- or I'll be on the, uh, what's the thing called? The row little machine. He'll be on the treadmill mm-hmm. and we're sitting there just talking shop. Cause it's like, there's oh, not cool. that many people to talk to about this stuff. And, and my numbers are not even one one hundredth of his numbers, but yeah. I study this stuff. So and I study marketing behind the scenes of marketing of what these companies do. I, I just think we could all do a better job of, of, of elevating our social media presence. And, and you're doing a great job with quality, but, but doing quality, presenting yeah. yourself in a quality way. And if we are even understood how much money is being spent, on marketing the products that we're using every day, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's so much, I have a abundant mindset, so there's enough for me to win. There's enough for you to win. And oh yeah, there's thousands of people listening to us right now. There's even enough for all of y'all to win. And, uh, but we have to do a better job of putting out quality content, being mindful of what, if, a, if someone from a marketing department at one of these brands looks us up, what are they going to think? Are they going to think, absolutely? Oh, is this somebody I want to work with? Is this somebody I want to partner with? Or are you, you know, act in a fool. So these are all the kind of conversations we're having in the hot tub club. Not one time do we talk about pop culture or, or, or just, yeah. Indie. it's all business all week. Uh, it's like a mastermind. It's creating the content and it's also just having high level business conversations and picking the brain of, of Caleb Allman and all these guys, Naylor, Blake Alberts and all, all these guys. So it's, it's, it's incredible. And if we do it again this year, I'll definitely do my best to get you in the house. Yeah, that'd be cool. And like, yeah. And you know, the people you surround yourself with, you know, that's how you're going to become like, that's who you're going to be like. So just surrounding yourself with good entrepreneurs, like even like me, like I've been surrounding myself with other lawn care business owners lately. 
and I just feel a lot more like I've got a lot more knowledge about how to do stuff. And it, if I need to call someone to ask, ask a question, I've got people for that. I feel a lot more just uplifted in my business. I feel like my business is doing better. I feel like I'm doing better in my business. I'm doing better with my employees. And just overall, just surrounding yourself with people like that is just better for everybody, honestly. That is so good. Well, it's going to be my bedtime here. I go to bed early. <laughs> and you're out there in Kansas, which I've been to Kansas one time. Do you ever know what happened to a guy named Britt Dowd? Do you ever hear of yeah, him? I have not. You don't know? You have never heard of him? or you I've never heard of him. him. Okay, well, then you don't know what happened to him. I was at his house. He lived in Kansas. That's the only time I've ever been to Kansas. And uh, he was creating content like crazy and then he just disappeared. So I don't know what huh. ever happened to him. What um, part of Kansas is he in? Kansas City. Okay. It's, it's, that's, it's, where, uh, that's where B&B's at, right? I think he's on Missouri side. Yeah, Blake's on the Missouri side. I think Blake's over by Overland Park. But Blake's big money, man. He, he's got a really nice home. Blake's my guy. I love Blake. I drove. It's probably like I actually went from Blake's to Britt Dow's. It was like 45 minutes away. And it was in Kansas side of Kansas City side yeah. of Kansas. But it's, it's it's not like they're it's you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it was a drive is what I'm saying. But um, that's the only time I was in Kansas. And, it, and it's 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 nice, man. Yeah, I like Kansas a lot. All my family's here. I plan on staying here. Pretty much for the long term, just because, you know, family's here. I, I I like it here, so. Well, if you ever are in Georgia and you want to shoot content, man, I, I live uh, pretty close to Atlanta, Georgia, so. Uh, hey, I will be, I don't have permission yet. Hopefully my fiance doesn't listen to this podcast, but we we will be in Atlanta for two days on our honeymoon. So, I mean, maybe even if we can't shoot content, maybe we can just get lunch or something. That'd be cool. Yeah, man. Well, if you're on your honeymoon, man, you, you better be uh doing honeymoon things with your wife you, you need to be it'll be a nice lunch a very nice lunch and you'll just show up <laughs> okay yeah well dude we'll just, there. Just, just let me know off air because there's <laughs> uh there's some phenomenal places to eat lunch um that i could recommend you to take your what do they call honeymoon your bride your uh there's a word i guess my wife i don't know <laughs> your wife is there, a, is there a word for it i don't know Newlywed. That's what the word I was like. Newlywed, yep. Your newlyweds. But or if you want me to, to to hang out with you guys as well, that's one thing about Atlanta, man. These folks can eat down here, man. There's a there's a lot of good food. So I go out on these tours, man, and sometimes people take me out to dinner and it ain't that great. And they're oh, that's the best place in town. I was like, that's right, <laughs> man. But you gotta be you gotta be hospitality, just go with you. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the meal, appreciate it. And then you know, Oh yeah. That'd be cool. All right, man. Well, I gotta get I gotta I gotta um get ready for bed. I know we could talk for another three hours. Literally oh, that yeah. night. I drove home. I was I was so dog tired. I made it home safely. You guys are still talking. I was like, guys, I gotta go to bed. And I, I hung up and I looked at my phone and it shows you your timestamp and it said three hours and thirty four minutes. And you guys were talking before I ever called. So I don't know. Yeah, like, we're we're talking like an hour before, I think. <laughs> man, but that's that's that whole thing about iron and sharpen and iron and just like yep. For three hours, we talk business and best practices and, and, and what to look out for. And, and, and it's so powerful to have those conversations. Oh, yeah. I'm so thankful to get to meet folks like you, Spencer, and uh, look forward to uh, hopefully grabbing a meal in, in the ATL. And then uh, definitely Equip is going to be so much fun this year, man. It, it, people are going to recognize you. It's going to be a whole different experience. It's, it's <laughs> wild, man. Well, yeah. Well, thanks for having me on the podcast. I, uh, I'm glad we've been able to become a little bit better friends here, especially lately because you know we haven't even talked since since GIE last year. So it was nice having that conversation and you know just give me a phone call every now and then if you want to talk. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And let everyone who's listening know how they can connect with you with your YouTube channel and, and your other socials. Uh, go ahead and shout out how, how people can follow you on the interweb. Yeah. So I post every Friday morning on SB Mowing YouTube. I also post on SB Mowing TikTok. Um, I'm not very active on Instagram but or Facebook, but um, yeah, YouTube and TikTok, SB Mowing. And then I've also started making pressure washing content um, just a few weeks ago. And that is SB pressure washing on YouTube and on TikTok as well. Cool. I, I, I might give, I know we were talking on the phone the other day and I was like, I might get back on TikTok. So I, I might rejoining you back over there. How many, TikTok, it out. how many TikTok followers do you have? I'm almost at 300 K. Wow. And that's lawn care content you're posting over there. Yep. Um, I take the, the best snippets of my YouTube videos basically and post it on there and kind of do a short voiceover with them. So yeah, I've gotten about, I'm just about to pass the 300,000 mark. And then, man, I think I'm almost at a hundred million views for the whole channel, for the whole channel. 
do you have those black bars above and below your thing like juggernaut or do you have, <laughs> you have so, <laughs> it it really depends on the shot you know if, if i'm filming something straight on i can zoom it in to where or, or crop it in to where it's you know not getting rid of anything but if it's you know, kind of taking up the whole landscape of the video. I try to zoom it in as much as I can to where the viewer can see it, to where there's little black bars, not as big as like a normal size 16 to 9 video. But yeah, I just kind of post the best of my YouTube videos on there. Okay. Well, I might, I might join you over there. I've been, man, I've been just you should. You should. thinking all about it. And uh, I've, I've paralysis analysis, literally, it's been like three weeks since we've had that conversation. And I think about it every day. I've been posting Instagram reels and they've been, one of them had like 500,000 views, 600,000 oh, views. So yeah, a couple of them had a half million views and, and they're go, going well. I was like, I could post the same thing on TikTok. I just. Yeah. I've had no luck with Instagram reels. Nothing. Really? Yeah. My videos that'll get, you know, 10 million views on TikTok. I'll get like a couple hundred views on Instagram. I'm not, I'm not sure why. I don't know. I, just, I guess I just need to keep up with it. Keep posting. Now we need to switch rules. I got to give you the talk <laughs> you gave me earlier. Consistency. You might pop in a month. <laughs> might pop in two. Yeah. Consistency. Because I was shocked, man. I was posting these Instagram reels and I was like, you had 624,000 views. The other one had 500,000 views. I'll take yeah. it. You know? Get on TikTok. Hey, I'll give you a challenge. This next week, get your TikTok going. Get a couple of videos out. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> and send them and share share your favorite one with me. And I'll do edit on my TikTok. How about that? Okay. That's great. That'd be cool. All right. Sounds like a deal. Well, I, I appreciate your time and yeah. uh, we'll stay in touch. And, and you guys listening right now, follow SB Moen Friday morning, set your alarm clock. He's got a new video <laughs> dropping and you're the quantity guy, not the, pardon me. You're the quality guy, not the quantity guy. Like sometimes guys have hun- hundreds of videos. And they don't even have a silver play. You have like 19. And you have a silver play. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm just over 20, but uh, some of those are. Is that like a record or something? You only have 20 videos. You have a silver play. <laughs> I'm not sure, but s- some of those are duplicates. I think five are about duplicate videos where I made longer versions of them or whatever. So I think I'm around 16 original content videos. That's absolutely impressive. It's crazy. So I'm trying to get where I'm where I'm posting once a week. That's my that's my consistency right there. Cool. Well, it's great talking to you, man. Yep, it good talking still, to you. It wasn't so late, man. I, I, I got to wind down and get ready for bed. I'm, no, you're good. I'm I, old, man. Thank you for saving this time later at night for me because I was, we had eight inches of rain this week and I was mowing all day to catch up. So Yeah, I've, I've been following along with the weather. It seems like a lot of folks have got, got washed out there for a few days. So Oh, yep. Glad you're back at it. All right, man, I know oh, you had good. a long day, so I'll let you get going. All righty. Have a good one, Paul.